What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Before everything else, I just want to thank everyone who has been supporting my channel. We finally reached 11,000 subscribers and that means a lot to me. So if you guys are not yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to my channel for future race content. Let's go! So if you were able to watch our previous vlog, you would know that we have a new project car in the garage. It's actually the all-new Toyota Raze, the 1-liter turbocharged CVT variant. So today, I'm going to be giving you guys a full non-biased car review. So anyway, let's start with the exterior. So here it is guys, a brand new Toyota Raze, the 1 liter turbocharged CVT variant which is actually the top of the line variant. Finished in a pearl white paint with the two-tone exterior which means it has a black roof. The front of the car, to me it's actually pretty cute. It reminds me of the K cars in Japan and it looks like a bigger version of the cute Wego. So starting from the front we have the LED headlights over here which are actually pretty okay. I wouldn't say strong because even in my GR Yaris, the LED headlights are not that strong. So we also have an LED daytime running light over here and of course on the other side as well. And sadly, the LED technology didn't make its way to the fog lamps because the fog lamp, I believe, is just a regular halogen bulb which is a point of upgrade. Here you can see there's a proximity sensor because this is the top of the line model and yeah that's about it for the front of the car which I think is actually pretty okay. So moving on to the side of the car. The side of the car is where I am actually a bit confused. What I don't like about the side are these. As you can see they are chrome handles and if you check it out it actually doesn't match anything with the car because there are no other chrome bits on the car. So I don't know why they left that in in a chrome finish. I, I kind of wish it was a matte black finish or a gloss black finish. And apart from that, I don't actually like the turbo badge being placed there. I think it would have been better if they placed it here. Or actually just deleting it and just putting it at the trunk for a clean look. What I do like is actually the cladding, the plastic cladding over here. Uh, I think that gives off a more rugged look. Reminds me of the RAV4 actually. And here are the wheels of the car. These are actually 17 inch rims. Um, the tires are made by Dunlop. It's actually the Enna Save EC300 which are actually economy tires. Size of the tires is 205-60-17. So yeah, another part that we'll be upgrading in the future for sure. <laughs> Moving on to the rear of the car, I think this is actually a very cleanly executed design. I like how simple it is and the taillights actually look nice. They're actually already LED as well and this is what they look like when they're actually lit up. I like this design that they place over here because it just adds to the overall rugged look of the car. So same with the front, you actually get parking sensors or proximity sensors depending on what you want to call it. And at the same time, you get a third brake light over here, which is very useful. So I know guys that the pearl white color with the two-tone is actually the rarest that you can get. But personally, I kind of wish that we got it in a single tone color. Because if you take a look at this area, and I just find it very awkward that they had to cut the line here. And if you actually look very closely, this is a brand new car and you can see that the paint is imperfect as it is I mean yeah look at this spot if you actually put your finger over here you can actually feel that they painted it black first and then put the white paint on top I think this is one of the imperfections of the two-tone models I guess moving over here to the other side I think they got it perfectly over here um, so far there's no defects over here apart from this um, if you if we zoom in as you can see here, it's not perfect and this is a brand new car once again so I don't know, maybe it's just me expecting it to be perfect but I don't know if that's a valid excuse but 
I guess it is what it is. If you're not OC like me, I guess it's gonna be okay for you. So here's the engine bay of the Toyota Rays. This is again the 1 liter turbocharged engine which produces 97 horsepower and 140 newton meters of torque. And as you can see, it's a pretty tiny engine compared to the whole space of the engine bay. It's just here in the middle. And here you can see the intake. And cold air is fed to the intake via this duct over here. And then the air goes there. And then into the turbocharger. So this is the turbocharger. It's actually pretty small. The size is just right for this 1 liter 3 cylinder engine. And if you look here, this is actually the intercooler, which is also tiny as well. So having a tiny intercooler and these short intercooler hoses means that the turbo is not going to be laggy and that you get immediate boost from the turbo whenever you step on the throttle. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but you can actually see my shoe over there because this car does not have an under tray which covers the belly of the engine so for me that's actually okay because after driving this thing for a while i realized that the engine bay can get very hot because of this turbocharger and there is no um space for the heat to escape when the hood is actually closed so the only way for the hot air to actually get out of this engine bay is when you start moving already and that's when it exits below the engine bay so let's take a closer look at this front grille of the car. Over here on the left side, you can see that that's where the horn is. And I don't like that they placed the horn over there because it's blocking a part of the intercooler. So I think what I plan to do in the future when we upgrade the horn is to actually put it here behind that area which is totally open so that the intercooler gets more air as you're driving. And then over here on the right side, as you can see, that's where the radiator's at. So the radiator spans from here all the way down here. And that's what keeps the car cool. So before I show you guys the interior of the car, I'd like you guys to judge what the doors sound like when you open them and close them. Let's start with the front doors. So here is the interior of the Toyota Rays. There's nothing luxurious about this interior because honestly, it's just filled with a lot of plastics. But let's first start with the seats, which I think are very comfy. They have leather on the sides, but they left the center part in cloth, which I find very good because here in the Philippines, it's very hot and cloth is actually cooler to the touch versus a leather seat. The driver's seat is actually adjustable going up and down, front and back, and it's of course reclinable like all the other seats. What we noticed about the seats of the Toyota Rays for the front and the back is that the length of this base is actually pretty short. So your knees would end up somewhere here, not here. So that might be an issue on long drives, I don't know, but that's what we noticed so far. So here at the back, the seats are finished the same way. This actually reclines, but this is the most reclined that you can get. And I kind of wish that they added a center armrest over here, just so that, you know, there's something to rest your arms on during long drives. I'm actually quite happy that they made the hump over here pretty low, so that the person sitting in the middle doesn't have to, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> So the sidings for the rear part of the interior is all plastic, even this one is plastic, but that's because it's just the rear. But I guess that's what you get for a 1 million peso car. But when we take a look at the front, I like what Toyota did here because they made this into leather. Now that's very important because this is part of the touch points, which are the parts that you'll be touching a lot when you're driving. So they also made the steering wheel leather the shift knob is also leather so those are the parts that you'll be touching a lot so at least you're not touching plastic 24 7 right 
So let's now take a look at the trunk space. The trunk space is actually pretty big. I just find this cover pretty weird because it does not go up together with the tailgate because for the GR Yaris it does. But yeah, for this one, you'll have to like bend this and take it off like that. And underneath this base is actually a full spare tire, which is pretty good. Alright guys, so we are now sitting at the driver's seat of the Toyota Rays. And the first thing that greets me are actually two big screens. The first one is here, which is your gauge cluster or instrument panel, whatever you want to call it. And what I find pretty cool about this one is that you can actually change the design. So all you have to do is access the buttons on the steering wheel, like that, and then go to designs. And there's actually four designs. So we're right now we're at display number four. If we go to display number three, looks like that. And then display number two looks like that. And then display number one looks like that. And then for the second screen over here, I don't know how many inches this is, but it's actually a pretty big one. What matters to me is that it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are both very important. The speakers of this car, they're actually pretty okay, but they start to not sound okay when you're playing songs with some deep bass. So that's another point of improvement, I guess, for this car. I think that's the only thing that you really need to know about this head unit. Apart from it having a backup camera. I, I don't know if you guys heard it, but the doors locked automatically as soon as I moved the gear selector. And that's because uh, I programmed it to do that. So over here, you can actually do a lot of programming under vehicle settings. So that's the blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. The one that goes toot 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 on the side mirror whenever you're trying to cross lanes, that's it. And then you can mess with the door locks, adjust the wipers. I forgot to mention, you guys can actually change the sound of the turn signals. So right now, this is the sound. That's number two. And if we go to number one, And then if we go to number three, pretty cool. What I like about the sidings is actually they're pretty wide so that when you rest your arms on it, it actually does not fall outside. So it, yeah, there, it's pretty wide, pretty comfy. Unfortunately, I have to show this to you guys because here in the interior, you can actually see more of the cost cutting that Toyota did with this car. As you can see, there's this plastic silver trim. And if you zoom in, can you see that? That is uh, an imperfection. There are some imperfections on the edges of the plastic trim. And then looking over here at the dashboard, there are panels that are not leveled off. So yeah, some plastics are rough around the edges and they're actually pretty sharp. Over here in the door handles, there's actually some imperfections as well. As you can see over there at the tip, when you touch it, it's actually pretty sharp. And there's like some excess plastic that's... Yeah, you get what I mean, guys. Again, we go back to the price of this car, which is just slightly above 1 million. So I don't know if these are valid excuses. But for me, I kind of wish that they just perfected all of these minor imperfections. Taking a look at the driver's side, we have a cup holder over here, which goes like that. And then we have more cup holders over here. One, two, and this extended slot over here. And then you have this. And then um, you have your traction control here. Parking sensors, which you can turn on or off depending on what you prefer and then over here in the middle there's a cubby hole over here with a lighter socket and two usb ports what's nice is that one of the usb ports is actually 2.1 amperes already so that's a fast charging unit i guess on the other side you also got lots of cup holders there and another cup holder here and you got this glove compartment and then you have your center armrest, which also has some storage inside. 
and then you have this little slot over here put your wallet or your cell phone in um that's about it for the interior of the toyota rays so you might think that i've been complaining so much about the imperfections of this car but honestly after driving this car i can actually forgive it because driving this car is actually pretty fun and i'm not even lying first the engine is great and what's even better and what impresses me the most is actually the cvt of this car as a car enthusiast we're not supposed to like cvts but the cvt of this car is apparently a special one because it's called the dcvt which stands for direct shift cvt fun fact there's actually a real first gear in this transmission unlike traditional cvts where you have no gears at all so yeah this has a first gear and then it shifts to cvt mode after it gets up to speed what's nice about this car is the moment you step on the throttle it's gonna give you immediate response no lag at all and it's pretty torquey so you can get up to speed really quick so it's gonna go into first gear and it's gonna shift to cvt mode first gear cvt mode amazing <laughs> so if you want to know more about the technical side of the dcvt you can look up engineering explained because he actually explained the whole technology behind the direct shift cvt of toyota and that's what's inside this car the reason why i'm so impressed is because i came from a 2015 subaru wrx cvt which is supposedly a very good CVT because it, it can handle 270 horsepower and in fact our WRX during that time was producing 305 wheel horsepower in that CVT apart from that my mom has a Subaru Levorg which is also a CVT jumping from the Subaru CVTs into this CVT by Toyota it's really night and day like you step on the throttle here no lag at all no waiting for the speed to finally kick in it's just instant response overall this is a very impressive package and I, I i don't know what to say i love the engine and the cvt of this thing so in terms of steering um this is actually good for beginner drivers because it is very 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 light and i personally don't like it because if you know my background, I'm actually into performance driving and a very light steering wheel is not a, um, it's not confidence inspiring. What I also don't like about it is that when you're actually driving pretty fast, you don't get enough steering feedback to know what the tires are actually doing. And that's, well, that's what us car guys really look for, right? <laughs> but yeah, this doesn't have it. But again, this car was made for city commuting, I guess. So that doesn't matter. And I guess this is perfect for what it is made for. The ride is really soft and very comfortable. Perfect for your daily commutes in the city. But it starts to get a bit unresponsive and, you know, a bit lazy when you try to drive fast. But again, this car was not made for that. But because the engine is so good and that the transmission is so good, it actually makes me kind of want to drive fast <laughs> like look at this i'm gonna try to go over a hump no brakes and it just takes it like a champ it's quick see it just gives it to you i'm very very impressed we're gonna try turning on power mode We're not gonna reach 100. I couldn't get to 100 because of how bad the traffic is. So anyway, you might be curious as to what the induction sounds like or the exhaust sounds like. So here's a short clip of that. So that's it guys, my initial impressions of the Toyota Rays in the 1.0 liter turbocharged CVT variant. 
I hope this video was able to supplement your thoughts on the car. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you could leave a like and subscribe to my channel for future race content. I know that the car is stock right now, but I don't think it's gonna stay stock in the near future. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time. You guys take care.